thanks a lot for your time. Well, thank you for inviting me. First, uh, a definition. What is a conservative? Conservatives, as I understand them, are people who are aware of the fact that they've inherited something good. Uh, a, a social order, a political system, uh, a culture, uh, and a legal uh, uh, tradition, uh, and they want to hold on to it. And that's what it means to be a conservative, wanting to conserve things. But they know they also have to make compromises to do that. But for them, the actual existing order is important. That's but, where you start from. Yeah, uh, and the recognition that it's much easier to destroy things than to create them. Okay, so why are so many journalists of the left? Because there's a, it's much easier to be against things than for them. To be, to be against things, you just have to point out their faults and then say, we want the alternative. You don't have to define the alternative. Whereas if you're actually defending existing things, you're in a much more difficult position. And journalists uh, find that difficult. And they have to acquaint themselves with a bit of history, acquaint themselves with what has happened uh, when people have tried to live without you know, the legal order that they've inherited and so on. And, it's, of course, it's more boring, I guess, as a journalist. It doesn't make good copy to be for what's already there. Exactly. It is all about excitement in the end. Now, is there a, a reason why the left is particularly strong in the state media, your BBC, our ABC? For example, uh, our ABC doesn't have a single conservative uh, heading any of its main current affairs shows. It's a very interesting question. I, I think, in general... Obviously, state employees are more likely to be in favor of a big state than a small one, so they're more likely to def defend politicians who are in the business of funding people out of the central government. You know, so that would explain some of it. But it's not only that. I think it is, by in order to make a career in, in something, a big institution like the BBC, you've got to stand out. And it's much easier to stand out uh, by being rude about things uh, and uh, amplifying your disagreements than by showing that you accept something. Well, let's go to uh, last Monday's Q&A, but first some background. Q&A claims its audience is uh, balanced, although they always sound hostile to conservatives. Same on Monday. The ABC said nearly half were coalition voters and most of the rest were Labour. In fact, many were these socialists and their supporters. And two got chosen at the start to ask their questions. Both abused Education Minister Christopher Pine for wanting to make them pay more for their degrees. My name's Tom. I'm from Socialist Alternative. That's a lie. <laughs> I'm actually quoting you. Why don't we uh, let the minister answer yeah. your question? Well, can oh, I do that? <laughs> well, I actually haven't been given the well, opportunity. Go on. So. I'm giving you an opportunity. <laughs> Okay, guys, you're doing yourself no favours. And then the rest shut down the debate completely, forcing the ABC off air for several minutes. Uh, Roger, a lot of uh, sympathisers, a lot of people to the left have said, relax, this is just uh, democracy at work, is it? Well, of course, it, <laughs> it is in one respect, that um, in non undemocratic countries, you wouldn't ever find anybody demonstrating like that. They'd be st take taken away and arrested straight away. Uh, it is one of the good things of our institutions that we don't overreact to this kind of interruption. But of course, people who want to stop argument, and in particular to shut up people with whom they disagree, are not contributing to the democratic process. They are, are of course, bringing it to a stop. Well, um, the Socialist uh, Alternative also tried to invade a private function we both spoke at on uh, Friday. Mm. Now, the abuse and the shouting, you know, is that just students getting excited in their cause? Or is this intimidation, is the expression of force and shutting people down, is that, in fact, the cause? In, are they indulging in a totalitarian instinct? Is that really what's going on? I think that's a very important point. It's much more common to see this on the left than on the right. Um, of course, we did see it on the right you could call it the right, in, in Nazi Germany, but, but in normal conservative people do not approve of this kind of thing and don't well, the engage in socialists it. socialists that actually count as being on the left. But well, uh, exactly. Okay. Um, but uh, in, in our time, and I've certainly had this experience in England, it's always been organized leftist forces that have done this. And a lot, at a certain time, I couldn't speak in universities in Britain because there would always be this welcome committee 
who, who was determined to shut me up and, uh, and perhaps also use violence against me. And I, I think there is a reason for this, which is that the, the left-wing position defines itself as oppositional. It's against things. It has a vague, abstract idea of some things it's in favor of, like equality or liberation or whatever, but never bothers to define that. But it knows very clearly that it's against this thing here now, and so it amplifies its own hatred of that thing by getting together in a group and thinking, you know, uh, and entertaining these self-righteous thoughts. You know, we are absolutely uh, uh, together in this, and we're going to be, go against those people and shut them up, and we're right to do so. Well, y you're quite right. We've never seen conservatives disrupt the uh, Q&A, but we have seen a supposedly anti-war protester throw his shoes at former Prime Minister John Howard. What is it with the left and violence? You say they, they get excited and, and all that, but the, the force, the shutting yeah. down of debate, uh, even something like uh, the BDS, the uh, boycott and divestment movement to shut down yes. Israeli academics, etc. What is it with the force, the left and violence? Yeah, well, th there is a, a sense of the weakness of their position underneath all this, that, that they are never able to define exactly what that society, great society that they're going to produce will be like. Uh, and they, in order to prevent discussion of this, uh, they concentrate only on the present, the present evil. You know, and, and they do see things in moral terms. Uh, the, the person whom they're attacking is not someone who disagrees with them. He's someone who's evil and therefore doesn't have the right even to disagree. And that is, means that there's a, there are other emotions being animated than purely the dispassionate, rational emotions. But is it a part, too, that, you know, for example, uh, conservatives tend to be individualists, or if, you, if you've got an individualist yeah. philosophy, all you want to do is be left alone. If you're a collectivist, you want to do good to others, and that yeah. requires often to force them to do what you think is uh, absolutely. good. Absolutely. There is a moralizing and self-righteous streak which uh, has a... Uh, it originates in good things, in, uh, in compassionate feelings often, uh, but doesn't have any patience with the things that stand in its way. And it, this is the reason why when leftist governments get in power, they very often do go in a totalitarian d direction. They start shutting down freedom of speech. They start actually trying to control institutions and to make sure that, the, that, that things will remain like this forever. Roger Scruton, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for inviting me.